Okay, it's Friday afternoon, almost Friday night, and all my parts are finally in. Took almost all week where it used to take only two or three days because, well, most of you who are paying attention to what goes on know why it takes longer to get everything. But, alright, so ordered the carburetor kit. Not sure if the gasket's correct. I think I mentioned in my last video that I would order gaskets that I know fit. So, Summit had everything but the carburetor kit. I ordered that from somewhere else. I don't have the name. Advanced Engine Design Performance Products. There's a name right there on the package. So, we got everything in here now. It's got mainly the only thing I'm wanting out of these. I should have just ordered accelerator pumps and I probably already had the other stuff. The needle and seats. I'm going to replace the needle and seats. I want to see if these gaskets match the correct gaskets because I have ordered kits the 4500 the kits for the 4500 is supposed to fit this carburetor and I have ordered kits and these gaskets do not match especially the bowl gaskets right there is where the accelerator pump when the accelerator pump is squeezed and forces gas through the passage this is the passage and that passage on some of those other, from some of those other kits, on these gaskets, did not line up. So uh, we'll see how all that works out. Right now, we are replacing the diaphragm on my um, Mallory regulator. And as with everything else, things get changed and your old stuff gets obsolete. And according to these directions, this diaphragm is supposed to work on the old style and new style. Now. And according to these directions, if your seat, which is, see that hole, see the chamfer on the hole? The chamfer is the actual seat. And this big giant needle goes in that chamfer, and that's what seats it. And that's what restricts the amount of gas that comes through and gives you the pressure that you adjust it to. According to these guys, if it's a 9 16 diameter, you got the late style. 7 16 diameter, you have the early style. And mine is 7 16, I just checked it. So, if you have that, it says the gasket must be used. And what they're talking about, they give you a thick gasket, which this originally did not come with. And I've got it stuck to this right now, and I'm working one-handed because I'm using the camera as you can see you get the picture there's a thick gasket and it makes sense that I gotta use the gasket because if you see the difference in height here that gas thick gasket is supposed to make up for that height we'll see how that works out on this diaphragm it doesn't look bad I'm gonna keep it as a spare in emergency but it, unless you look up inside of there that could be just um, just corrosion but that, that could also that corrosion can cause these diaphragms to get dry and leak it could be a slight leak up in there what I think the biggest culprit is <clears throat> on my fuel pressure gauge bouncing up and down and going down to almost 5 pounds when you right at the end of the track I think it's got a lot to do with uh, the fuel filter I've already replaced the filter so we won't be videoing that. I tried to get as much done as I could through the week so that I can get this done tonight and be ready about them all. And I also rebuilt the fuel pump. But um, after I showed you what it looked like inside the filter canister, and, it, I, and I mentioned that it didn't look too bad, not dirty. Well, after that filter soaked in that gas all week, I started seeing some stuff in the bottom of that bowl. So this filter could have been restricting my fuel just enough to cause it that fuel pressure gauge to bounce up and down and possibly slow the car down I don't know and if that's happening it doesn't have consistency it doesn't do it consistently and that could cause your car to be inconsistent and maybe causing that one very slow run I am hopeful that this will make this car run a little better than it has been since I brought it out of the trailer after it set all that time not promising everything but um, we'll go ahead and all we got to do here is stick this on. 
line up our bolt holes. That goes in there like that. And we have a spring somewhere. Okay, I found my spring, finally. And we just stick that on top of there. I'm going to spray this out with carburetor cleaner real quick. This right here. Probably should have laid the gasket on first. Then laid this piece on top of that and held it down. And got my boat started through. This will work. have to go too crazy tightening these because that is aluminum. What I'm doing right now I'm sure is plenty tight. It remains to be seen. We'll wait till we get it all together and turn on the pump. Hopefully it won't leak. And hopefully it will still be set at the same pressure and it'll tell me we did this diaphragm does work with this regulator. Someone's starting trouble. Look at what she's trying to do. What, what are you going to do with that? Ha ah. ha! <laughs> Stepped on a string. She likes to steal things. She's got all kinds of toys to play with, but she wants to steal things that I don't want her to have and take them out in the yard and chew on them and tear them up. Messing with my twine. You want it? Can't have it. Why don't you go out there and torture another squirrel? I had to rescue a baby squirrel from you two days ago. You were torturing him. You was chewing on him like your Joe Biden rag doll. Chew doll, that is. That's probably why you're coughing, chewing on stuff like this. You swallow stuff you shouldn't swallow. Go play. I got stuff to do. Okay, since I did not film the rebuild of the fuel pump, which it probably did not need, but I just ordered the kits aren't that expensive. I think this is like 36 bucks. Same with this. This is the check valve kit, and this is just the uh, the vein rebuild kit. Now the rebuild kit comes with a new gasket, it looks just like this. But this check valve kit also has a new gasket, so now I got a spare new gasket. Which all you do when you rebuild the the vein part of it. This is a vein pump. You replace this. These four little plates slide in here and they fit into a little hole at the underneath that bottom plate. That plate right there, all that stuff goes under that plate. In the check valve kit, you take this screw out, you got a spring. You got that plastic plug and there's a little rubber insert inside the plug and there is a filter screen that goes around a slot right here and remember when I was talking about how I should have my filter after the pump which I still should but you do have some protection if something goes wrong with this pump you still have some practice protection you have a filter screen right here and that screen looks just like this right here and this is my old one it had a little bit of dirt in it not bad but you get this little rubber seal that goes around that screw I showed you here's the spring that came out here is the check valve and there's a little flat rubber plug that goes right in here and that's all there is to rebuilding these unless your electric motor goes bad and they're I know on a Mallory's there's an electrical rebuild kit you get new brushes and stuff like that. And I do have a kit for my, one of my Mallory's that went bad. I don't know if that kit's available for the Hollies. I bet it is. But these parts I will keep as spares just in case something goes wrong. Oh, gasket. So, okay. So the next thing I need to do, I want to clean this carburetor up. 
and I'll tell you which gaskets match up and I'll show you what I do and don't replace. Okay, so I had this carburetor body all cleaned up and blowed out and everything. And I've already and I found one problem. This probably won't affect the performance or ET of the car, but we do have some uh, adjustments wrong, and this will affect my idle. And if you remember, I don't know if I complained about it or not in the last video or mentioned it, but the car acted like it wanted to die at the end of the track. And these throttle plates, you look in this bore here. See that little slot right there? It's called a transfer slot. And these are supposed to be adjusted where you're just barely seeing the bottom of it. Now I know some people will have them adjusted way too far open like that because if for some reason they can't get it to idle and they'll just have it idled way too fast. But this one, the front is not showing any at all. And the rear is Probably about right. Don't know if you can see it. I can't I don't know if I can get it close enough to the camera, but you can just see the bottom of it. It could probably come open a little more. But if you can't get if you adjust them to where just the very, very bottom of that transfer slot is showing, you should be able to adjust your idle width, your air mixing and your metering plate and we're going to try that on this go around here so I'm going to adjust it this uh, front one to where I can just barely see it bottom of that slot and it was quite a bit off because I still can't see it after screwing it in a little bit I can find a screwdriver not my best screwdriver but it's close to the carburetor I'm going to go ahead and Turn that screw in and the screwdriver. There we go, that one fits better. And my cheap little light. Yeah, this one was out by a lot. Okay, I'm just starting to see the slot now. This one's out by a whole lot. So we probably had our air fuel mixture screws way off too so after I do this this thing is probably going to idle way too high if I leave those air fuel mixture screws like they were okay so we got a little bit of that slot peeking through now on front and back that back is a little bit sticky on these dominators Maybe I can get the back a little more. Like I said, the way it's sitting right now, it'll probably idle way too high. Yeah, it's hard to see them. At least it is for me, because my eyes are not what they used to be. But hopefully you can see just the bottom of that slot. See if I can work that flap open so you can see better. Kind of hard to see without the light. Yeah, you can barely see it. So we're going to leave that adjusted right there and uh, show you some other stuff. I'm going to, a few little things I find, I'll show it to you. I'm finding something else that may help. So this kit I bought which is supposed to fit and it says it right here 1050 and 1150 carburetors and I had bought other kits that were for the 4150 or 4500 model and my gaskets did not match now here's to my old gaskets and it, it looks like things line up but if you look See that right there? See where it's kind of mashed in? Almost like that hole is too small for that. These guys have got a bigger hole. That's what came with the kit. It sure does look like everything else matches up nice. Let's see if the picture I got it on the right way. Yeah, I think that's the right way because there's a pin on your metering plate. 
you to line those gaskets up. Yeah, they go on like that. So that would go on like this. Yeah, that might amount to something and that might not. I'm talking about them diameters right there. And I also noticed it shouldn't shouldn't matter this old gasket here if you see of course this hole and that hole lines up but you got these two holes here which really go to nothing so that those two extra holes should not matter but uh, this here looks like yeah it blocks off all that slot and it only lets fuel through fuel or air whatever goes through there through the these holes. So yeah, I think we got we finally got the correct gaskets for these car for this carburetor. That diameter there might mean something. I mean if you look at the especially when you look at it on a metering plate, see how much see how everything see how it clears everything there and that yeah, that could be some blockage, so, hmm, we'll see. Now, on, the, on these metering plates, now, I've already taken one uh, idle mixture screw out. I'm going to see where I've got it set at, and when I put it back together, I'm going to put it back where it was. i got a feeling after finding this transfer slot adjustment being way off from one to the one from the front to the back that I'm sure I'm going to have to change this to get a good idle but let's see that is that one was screwed all the way in huh no nope. I've got this one all mixed up how'd that happen anyway yeah so that one screwed all the way in the other one I checked it before I took it out it was like uh, turned out two turns so this one screwed all the way in that was turned out two turns that was probably me about two years ago trying to get this thing to run right with the, not knowing those transfer slots were not adjusted right or the throttle plates were not adjusted right in conjunction with transfer slots. Now these little seals right here I really like them. They, uh, I ordered these separate from a kit and I'm going to reuse these because this kit don't have anything to put in there. Originally the cork and they're okay, but they'll dry right after a long time. But uh, the, sometimes they'll give you rubber O-rings. Don't use those. These things will stay loose and don't work right. These here are pretty nice. I ordered them out of Summit. You, I think you got to search for idle mixture screws, seals. I think that's what they called. And uh, they they fit kind of snug when you screw this into there. And, they, and once you make an adjustment, it stays there. Now the kit did come with new uh, screws. I'm going to replace those. I'm going to blow these out. And then we'll put this back together. That one's bottomed out. I'm going to come out. This one half. One and a half. Now, now on, since this is, this is a drag car, of course, for those of you who follow this, my channel, know that. I don't use a power valve. This is a power valve block off. But you still got to have a good gasket under there. So we're replacing that. If you want to do away with the power valve, they claim whatever jets you were using with the power valve, you want to jet it up about three, maybe four sizes. Some say five. But, uh, but with the drag engine, I mean, all you do is idle to the idle through the staging lanes, idle up to the tree. The tree comes down, and you're wide open. So, honestly, I just don't think you need a power valve. A lot of people feel that way on race engines. So, yeah, I'm going to clean out my carburetor bowl. Get that together. And we'll be ready to put this on the car. Okay, now we're going to do the fuel bowl. We'll start with accelerator pump. 
got it all ready apart as you can see. Well, before we put the accelerator pump in, we need to put this little guy in, this little, little diaphragm. We're we'll using a little bit of, that's not a little bit, that's a lot, a little bit of Vaseline. And just push it through that hole. And always take a hold of it right there and pull it through. There's a little ball in there. Don't pull too hard. You'll rip it. But only I do have one spare if I were to mess up. So, yeah. As you can see, you got to pull that little ball through there so it'll stay in place. Now, let's see. We need spring. New 50cc pump. Because dominators take the big pump. Get our screws. Don't go too crazy on the tightening. These threads are kind of fragile on these. So now we can flip it over. Got a new needle and seat. Got a little bit of lube on the or Vaseline on the O-ring seal. Stick that in there and get the thread started. I use the plastic gaskets. They hold up. They, you can take them off and they don't tear. I really like them. You use them over and they last forever. Another plastic gasket on the bottom of that screw. Now this kit came with new nuts, screws, and these plastic washers. But I'm using my old ones. I can have them for spares. Now before I tighten that nut up, I'm going to eyeball this float level. Need to loosen that screw up. Need to turn that nut in with that screw loose. And I'm just going to get the float, just eyeball it up. Kind of level there. I'm sure I'll have to adjust it after it's running. You almost always have to. Snug that down. And one more little thing I always do on this diaphragm as you can see even though my float shouldn't go that low see how it's hitting see how it's hitting the diaphragm right there well you don't want to go below that ball there because your diaphragm will fall out but always clip that so that your float can fall down travel free you won't get hung up on it Make sure you get that out of there. And that's all of the bow. Now I'm going to get the rest of the carburetor together. You know how to put a bow on, hopefully. And hopefully I do too. No, I do. Some might say I don't. But uh, I'm going to get this together and I'm going to make sure nothing leaks. If nothing leaks, all you're going to see is hopefully the startup. Okay, we got it all together. And only had one leak at the fuel pump. And that was at the on the regulator valve screw, and it was just the O-ring was squeezed out, so I just loosened the screw up, repositioned the O-ring. Luckily, it didn't tear it, and that fixed that leak. My uh, fuel pressure was way too high, but after using this later style diaphragm, because you can't get the original diaphragm for this regulator anymore. Uh, if I don't like how that works out, I may have to buy a new regulator later on, just because they discontinued the original diaphragm for this regulator but I followed their directions it's supposed to work I just had to adjust it way out compared to where I had it what used to be seven pounds was like 14 pounds which is way too much so we're going to start it up and see if it'll run like I adjusted it and we'll try to and if it don't idle right we'll try to get it idle using only the air fuel mixture screws and not screw around with that throttle plate adjustment and we're going to check our float level. I just checked it after turning the pump on. It was a little high. Turned it down. But it needs to be running to get that right. So let's see what it does.
In order to get it to idle low enough where I wanted it with the uh, throttle plate mix or adjustment I had, I had to go in way too far with the uh, air fuel mixture screws. So I ended up having to back these out. I had to turn them back in and turn back these back out because it would die and drive. So, uh, which uh, when you adjust those throttle plates where I showed you, that just gets you in the ballpark and. If you have to go too far with air fuel mixture screws, you got no choice then to back that out. But uh, it does seem more responsive. Uh, that could could be uh, due to the uh, gaskets. I noticed my uh, fuel pressure gauge is looking a lot more steady. We'll see what it's like going down the track. But um, I know when you get the idle where you want it, if you rev it up enough to just tip open the back barrel. This sticks. See that? I need to do something about that. See right there. I don't know if it's my throttle plates rubbing and maybe I need to loosen them up and readjust them. I'm not sure. Could have something to do with this cam here. Not really sure, but we need to uh, look into that. See how it's sticking? Now it might be why can't get my idle to stay where I want it to stay. I may have to take it back off and see if I can't uh, realign those rear throttle plates. Let's see if it see if it uh, starts better now. Still getting that drag on start, and I don't think that has anything to do with my carburetor. It's something it's been doing before. And what it is, my advance is locked out on this, meaning I am fully advanced. Whatever I got the timing set at, which I think is around 35, it stays there. And that's the way we do a lot of drag cars. I've tried it with a, a advance hooked up, and I just didn't like it. My springs are always sticking and stuff. And on a drag car, you don't really need that when you got the um, got the right converter and gear and all that. But I do have a start retard hooked up to my MSD box that should not let it do that. I may have to see if it's set wrong or something. But um, the important thing is this here doesn't stay stuck anymore. I took the carburetor back off, flipped the carburetor upside down, loosened the rear throttle plate screws, and pulled that shut. And then retighten the screws, and now it goes back to where it should. So that needs to be adjusted. I got a little, little bit too much play between the accelerator pump and that arm. So uh, I'm going to call this good. I did what I set out to do here. And uh, hopefully this is going to fix my fuel pressure fluctuation problem. I'm hoping it'll run a little bit better. Now we've got the correct gaskets in there. It may or may not. We'll see as far as being quicker. If it's consistent, I'm always going to be happy as long as it isn't super slow. I mean, like like it's sick, but we'll see. I, I got a feeling that those gaskets might make a difference. It sounds a little crisper. We know the air is going to be better. So uh, I'm taking too much video time talking, so I'm going to stop right here and continue this video tomorrow night if I hopefully get to race.